Hey there, BookTube. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be updating you on my second week doing the Summer Reading Challenge. So you'll remember that for the Summer Reading Challenge, I had to read 10 books in 10 different categories. And so last week, I got a total of 25 points because I read my first book, which was a book with a mostly blue cover. And I read... The Rosie Effect by Graham Simpson. I've gotten 10 points for this one. I'd also read a book where the title started with the letter R. I'd read Remember Mia by Alexandra Burt, which was a thriller. And I'd got 15 points for that. So last week, my total was at 25 points. Week two, I started off by reading a book that was music related. I read Audrey Waite by Robin Benway. Audrey Waite is a young adult fiction. I chose it because it was on a list of books that were music related. I couldn't think of a book that I had in my collection that was young, that was music related and so I went with this one. I didn't know what the book would be about. I chose it because it was young adult fiction and I thought that it would be an easy read. Audrey Waite is about Audrey. She's 16, she's just broken up with her boyfriend. When she breaks up with him, she walks away from him. He's calling after her, she doesn't respond. So when he calls out Audrey Waite, and she doesn't wait, he writes a song about it. He is a part of a band, his name is Evan, and he belongs to a band. And when he records the song of their breakup, the song catapults them into the music charts and it gets to the top 100. And Audrey is dealing with all this paparazzi, all this publicity because of her decision to end their relationship. And after all the fallout and all the the backlash audrey wait the book is now her side of the story that nobody has ever heard so it was a quite an interesting plot but i gave it three stars on my goodreads account because i didn't think that the language was appropriate for the teenage audience that it was supposed to be for i read a lot of fiction when I was a teenager and I don't think that if I had picked up a book like this one and my parents had seen it that my mom would have allowed me to keep reading a book like that so I gave it three stars because I didn't think it was appropriate for the I didn't think it was appropriate for the audience the teen audience that it was written for completing this book gave me 20 points on the challenge so there's that the next book I read this week was Silver Bay by Jojo Mose now you know if you've been watching my videos, you know that I really enjoy Jojo Mo's writing. You'll notice that I have the Me Before You poster on my wall. That is her probably her most famous book because there's a movie made about it. But when I, that was, so Me Before You is the first Jojo Mo's book that I read and I read it earlier this, this year. I really enjoyed reading the book. I wanted to see what else she had written. So I started a uh, plan to read all her books so far. This is the seventh of her books that I'm reading and she has seven more that I haven't gotten to yet because I just found out that she's published 14 books. So I'm reading my way through Jojo Mo's writing career. Finishing this book gave me 25 points. I use this to fulfill the category of book that is set in a country that you've always wanted to visit. This book is set in both England, London, England and Australia. The the title of the book, Silver Bay, is the location in Australia where most of the story happens. But as they do flashbacks, they go back to London. One of the characters also lives in London. It's a story that's told from multiple perspectives. So we, we get to see the story happening in more than one location. So I thought that was fantastic. If you read me before you and cried, most people who've read me before you and I think seen the movie have cried because the story is kind of a happy ending but also a really sad ending i don't want to spoil the book for you if you haven't read it but if you have ever wondered whether jojo mose can write a happy ending this book is the proof i got to a point in the book where i could see it going both ways i could see a happy ending i could see a really terrible ending towards this book i stopped reading and i told my friend that i think i'm going to stop reading now because if I stop, I could just imagine a happy ending for this book. But I plowed on, I kept going, and Jojo Mose, she really did it. She did it for me. This book has a great ending, and it renewed my faith 
in her ability to write a happy story. Now, the story is not a one of those and they lived happily ever after kind of stories, but I really enjoyed reading this book. The first 50 or so pages kind of dragged for me because she, you know, the book is written in multiple perspectives and it, you know, sometimes when you're telling the book, when you're telling the story from multiple points of view, there's a lot of groundwork to be laid. And so those first, say, 50 to 70 pages were a little less great. But in the end, it worked out. I gave this book five stars on my Goodreads. You could check it out. I'm going to put a link down below. This book gave me another 30 points. So for this week, I got 55 more points added to last week's total of 25. So I now have 80 points towards my challenge. Really looking forward to completing this challenge. Next week, my reading is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be doing the book to a thon. I'm going to be putting up my, my TBR list later. And I'm also going camping next week, so I'm not going to be reading as much. And I'm also doing some nonfiction reading, which I don't necessarily use towards these challenges. So next week, my numbers might be a little different. But so far, I've read four books for the challenge. I'm really excited. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you'll subscribe if you're not subscribing already. See you in my next video. Bye.